Brendan, I have met so many new people and seen faces I haven't seen in a while. I saw Ryan from Google, Colette from Plantronics, Dana from GM Financial. Actually, I think I saw her when Wade was doing his spiel. So uh, I'm super excited to see all these familiar faces and some new ones. I absolutely agree. This, this for me is more about my learning than any other time of year. So it's fa fantastic. I caught up with John from Starbucks. I learned a lot of great stuff from Claudia Healy from Verizon that had got me thinking differently in a short amount of time that I've been here. I heard some fantastic ideas from Melissa from Citrix. So it's an incredible week of learning and we're thrilled to be having this discussion with you today. So why don't we jump right in? Go for it, Pat. All right, so we're not here to talk about TA. And we're not here to talk about HR. What we're here to talk about is the evolution and uh, the relationship that Brenda and I have established over the last two and a half years. And the impact that relationship has had, not only within the HR umbrella, which is really important, but also for LinkedIn and then for, for you, right? So our relationship, the better it gets, the tighter it gets, the more influence we have and the more engagement we have with you helps everybody. And so we wanted to spend some time today with you and share how we made that work, not only with each other, but with the line leaders, with the candidates, with our customers. And so we're going to tell you some stories and share those insights, because there's always an opportunity. Let's do it. And before we jump in, I want to make sure I didn't forget this, because I had a nice discussion with many of you here today. And there's some people that some of probably are in the audience, and they're really important people. I'm guessing many of them aren't here, but I know you all feel the same way that I do about them. And I just want to take a quick minute. I'm going to take a quick video of this great looking audience helping me and sharing some gratitude for our recruiting coordinators. So I think everyone can. The heroes. <laughs> The RCs. So for real impact, we got a few thousand people here. We have thousands of people on this stream. So thank you everyone who's tuning into this stream. This is really pretty cool. So I want to do something real quick. If everyone can stand up, and don't stand up yet, but when we stand up, I'm going to count to three. And probably the best way to do this is to say, RCs rock. I'll take a video of that. Obviously, you can tweet it out, do whatever you want. But I want to capture this video because you all know just as well as I do, that they are the effing glue that keeps us from losing our mind and help us get success week in, week right. out. So everyone stand up real quick. Getting ready. All right. So on the count of three, it's RC's Rock. This is going to go out to millions of people to know that we appreciate what our recruiting coordinators do. All right? Here we go. One, two, three. RC's Rock. Awesome. I know they will appreciate that. Thank you for bearing with me. You made a lot of people smile just now, Brandon. Thank it, you for doing it's that. It's those little things. I mean, Wade's talking about those little things. I think about the experiences I've had in getting hired places. There's little tiny things that are really magical. So now let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the relationship between HR and TA. So put your hands up, and we're going to do the following, a little poll by fingers. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm sorry, 1 to 5, I want you to rate the relationship that you have with your HR business partner. This will not be recorded as far as I know. <laughs> but on a scale of 1 to 10, so 1 is candidly, you just hate them. You can't stand them. You don't want to be around them. They turn your stomach. 5 is like right now you're texting them, and you're like, this is awesome. I can't wait to see you. All right, so get them up. Get them up. I'm going to take a look over here. What's happening? Yeah, so we got some three, fives in the house. We got some fives. We got some twos. We got some ones. I, I see like, some threes. I like the honesty. I see lots of twos and threes and fours. I can't see in the back. I don't think they're raising their hands back there. All right, now you are. Now I see you. We got some people who have serious love affairs. I can't affairs see that far, excellent. though. I think it's four or fives. We got fours and fives, yeah. we got lots of twos and threes. I'm seeing probably an average of like 2.75. So we're going to see <laughs> if throughout the course of today, 
we can get those numbers up a little bit. And we're going to share our journey on how, well, I'll tell you where, we, where, I, where I came from in terms of where my rating was. So this is Mohawk Shroff, and that's me. Nope. <laughs> how Crap. many people have been in this situation where hiring manager and recruiting continually bump heads? How many people have been through this situation? Just get, get your hands up. I don't even have to ask the question. I haven't even asked what the question is. The question, one question is, how many people have come away from engaging with hiring managers and be like, the, they will never make a decision about who to hire? Or they're unrealistic about who to hire? I mean, everybody. It's the world we live in. Here's one. How many people felt that way about something within the HR function, ah, we're not paying enough, or that we don't have enough of a talent workforce plan and strategy? Get your hands up there. Same thing. I feel the same way. So we want to figure out how to change that, because my feeling is no longer should we operate thinking about what we do in that context. You know why? Because it's BS, and it's a, it's a complete waste of time, and it's exhausting. So that is Mohawk and me. Back. So there are three things that we we're going to talk about. One, grabbing a beer. It could be a beer, it could be a coffee, it could be a lemonade, it could be a glass of water, it could be go for a walk. Think about the relationship you have in a different way. I think conference rooms suck. I think offices are terrible. They're bad places to have conversations where you want to build a relationship. And the same thing goes for candidates. That's a different talk. Second, focus on business problems. I contend, and Pat and I, have, I think, share this point of view, none of our business leaders want me to hear it get in front of them and talk about anything related to HR or recruiting or talent acquisition. What do they do? They just turn me down or turn me off. So we need to talk about business problems. I'm not a recruiting guy. We'll talk more about that. Test your hypothesis. I know for a fact that every single person sitting in this audience here has some hypothesis about something. I know if we just cut our interviews down from eight interviews to six, we'd hire more people. I know if we could pay a little bit more here, things might change. Or if we could just schedule our interviews faster, whatever it is, you've got some hypothesis. And I venture to guess, because I've lived in that world, majority of the time, I don't share it clearly, loudly enough with the right people who can help me get my job done. I put the boulders of TA on my back, and I think I'm going to be a hero, and I'm going to try harder to get it done. No more. So it starts with the beer. Starts with the beer. Or coffee. Depends on the time of the day. It, yep, it does not have to be a beer. It could be. OK, I'm just checking. So, a little bit more on sort of how we think about what we do. Anyone know who this guy is? Some lo oh, local. Oh, come on. <laughs> some local Angels fans. I'm a Giants fan. Who's a Giants fan? <laughs> wow. All right. That's my peeps over All there. All right, you got your peeps. I get this side of the house. <laughs> <laughs> anyone want to just shout out what Mike Trout's job is? I mean, it says it right here, but anyone want to say what he does? Catch the ball. What else? It sucks. Home he runs. hits home runs. What else? He's a center fielder. So Hustle. He hustles. I say that's not his job. We say that's not his job. It's not his job. His job is not his job. My job is not my job. Taking a cue and inspiration from a lot of the work Fred Kaufman's done, I've come to realize my job is not my job. Mike Trout's job is to help his team win. That's all that matters. Our job is to help, in our case, LinkedIn win. I don't identify myself as a talent acquisition professional anymore. I don't identify myself as a, biz, as a HR professional anymore. I am just a business person trying to solve business problems. And through doing that, the types of conversations I've had have completely changed. But it's not been an overnight thing. It's been through a relationship I've built. It's been through falling down over and over again. It's through being exhausted from doing recruiting, what I think is a flawed approach. So we'll share how we unlock some of this stuff together. So Pat, over to you. All right. Do I have to explain what that is? <laughs> so anytime you join a, a new company, a job, there's an opportunity in front of you. So when I joined LinkedIn about two and a half years ago, it wasn't really a shit show, so excuse the picture. But what it was is an opportunity. I didn't know how to picture an opportunity, so we came up with this. The opportunity was that we were not selling the right opportunity for LinkedIn. Our talent story wasn't aligned. Our data wasn't clean. 
Testing a hypothesis, like Brennan said, demands that you have the right insights, the right data at the right time. There's no way we could have gotten that. We weren't ready. We're about to implement a human capital management tool. Sounds sexy, right? Um, we weren't on point for some of the data elements because we weren't sure, we were operating a little bit of a black box. And we were trying to scale. So 3,300 employees when I joined, close to 10,000 by year end, 3x growth three years. Our job to make LinkedIn win is to get out of their way to ensure they got the talent when they needed it, the right kind of talent, and had a strategy to anticipate their needs for growth. We were there to make LinkedIn win. So I got really excited about my opportunity and said, let's change this. Let's think differently. Let's make sure that we're looking at the business. So I chatted with my team, and I said, look, what we need to do is um, look at the business line. Look at the profit and loss of a company. Do you know that the P&L, how much of it is OPEX cost for talent? On average, a company's OPEX, 80% is talent related. The cost of talent, the hiring of talent, the productivity of that talent, discretionary effort they apply, the cost of churn, you make a wrong hire, they leave first year, that's a problem. No one thinks that's a good outcome. 80%. So you have, you in this audience, have a huge responsibility to the success and profitability of your company. So we were there to, to make sure that we enabled that. So I got all excited. I like to geek out on data and on systems. Who doesn't, right? I do. And we did an audit, and we looked at some scaling and some benchmarking. And I said, I, I want to be great. What does that look like? So we did this assessment, and we came up with a three-year journey map. This is an abbreviated version of that journey map. I was so excited. I'm like, this is awesome. The first 18 months, I will tell Jeff and my team, we're going to build platform plays. We're going to scale. We're going to get the right tools and systems and data and insights. We're going to build relationships. And the back half of that 18 months, we're going to start iterating and innovating and building that innovation layer on top of that platform. And we'll have the data I need. And I'll know where to grow and how to grow and what kind of talent I need. I was super, super excited. And I thought my team was too. But I got a little pushback from somebody. And I was in for a surprise. So we are sitting in Pat's staff meeting. It's me and a fantastic team of folks that she assembled. And she put that stuff up on the, the overhead and, and started sharing things. And literally, this is what I'm thinking in my head. Blah, 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 HR, blah, blah, gobbledygook, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this is just going to be a nightmare. Literally. It's going to be a nightmare. He was smiling and nodding, but like tilting his head going, ah, eh, not too sure. And then he started pushing back. And so th think about where you, you've been in that journey. Because what I was living in is a place where recruiting for years in one form or another has been taking the heat on a lot of things. And we almost have an inferiority complex, one. And two, what else do we want to do? We want to please. And then what else do we want to do? We're going to go try harder and make it happen. And now something's getting in my way. This is just a nightmare. I got to go make it happen. This is going to not be good. <laughs> so I was dragging on and on. It was one of those meetings where like, it, I took over the discussion, more or less. And people are like, looking at me like, Brown, what's going on here? And then Pat literally did this. She shut her laptop. She looked at me as I'm blah, 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 and, and giving a bunch of pushback on her ideas. She's like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do, Brennan? I don't like victims. Who like? No one likes a victim. Brendan, come on. And I was like, all right, game on. This is good. The Boston and me came out. I'm like, bring it. What, what, let's it let's talk about this. Let's talk about it. But I feel like you know, there's some things we need to talk about here. That I'm afraid we're going to slow down, and you're going to get in my way and be nothing but a roadblock for me. I didn't know I was a goat. I didn't She's realize. A shepherd over there moving the goats right in, in Oh, a shepherd. That path. sounds better. <laughs> He's so politically correct, isn't he? And you know, so we continue to talk to her. I said, you know, don't be a victim. I said, that is totally fair. So let, let's really dig into this. You said, hey, I want to help. I want to you know, be 
a remover of, of blocks for you. I want to make sure that you can accelerate. I want to help you succeed. I said, all right, let's see if this is true. Because we've been in all sorts of places where you might have a leader who wants to cover their you-know-what. They're not really going to help you. They might jump on the side of sort of, yeah, and recruiting isn't doing the X, Y, Z. No more. We should never work in that environment anymore. Because my frame of mind started to become, if Pat and I want to win for LinkedIn, Anything is game for me, for me to come to her and talk about, and we need to work together. So I said, all right, I'm going to test her out and see if she's going to help. And we dug into engineering, recruiting. Anyone have challenges hiring technical folks, engineers, by a show of hands? Nobody. That's clear. It's wow. not a problem. Try a different <laughs> function. <laughs> so, so we had assumed it was one of those normal, you know, sort of things that happen where it seems like there's challenges in engineering recruiting, and, re and uh, recruiting is getting a lot of heat for it. And it seemed to be, the perception I had was, it seems like compensation for a certain type of senior engineer. I don't know if we're able to pay it market at Silicon Valley. People are doing unnatural things with money. Let's see what we can do to solve this. But Brendan, what was the hypothesis of our line leaders? Recruiting sucks. So they were saying socks. you couldn't close the gap, you couldn't hire. Yep, not enough candidates, well, you, you can't close, what's going on? The, the normal stuff that we've all experienced. So we started to we sketch this out, and we sat down over a beer and talked about what we wanted to do. I said, I don't know how to represent this data, but there's, uh, my hypothesis is I think there's a compensation issue, and I need to pinpoint it in a meaningful way. Pat gave me some guidance on maybe we need to create somewhat of a heat map to sort of raise, raise the awareness on this. Uh, and I said, all right, let's, and this is literally the napkin from that beer and came away with, this is sort of a mock-up of what we put together, it was basically a look at every offer we had made at every level within engineering and whether we won or lost and where people were paid in the offer in terms of comp range. So mind you, I didn't do any of that. I didn't put any of that work together. Other people did, and we'll talk about that in a second. And an interesting thing that came out of this was in this heat map, we found that there were many people in the senior engineering pipelines that were getting offers that we're paying very well, according so, to the comp range. So let me pause you there. What pause you just me. acknowledged was your hypothesis on comp was wrong. It was wrong. Right. There was something else going on. Yeah. So we were getting I after say, it. I like hearing that you acknowledge that. That's all. <laughs> we're not always I was right. Wrong. I like this presentation when you get to acknowledge that a couple times. <laughs> I was wrong. But what we found was, as soon as we started sharing this Mohawk you saw earlier who was trying to kick my butt, we found that as we dug in to see you know, who are these candidates, what was happening, we found that there were some issues around how we were assessing this level of talent because we were paying them really well, but they're turning down our offers. And then we really dug into it more to understand, mm, are we leveling properly? Started to dig into some really meaty issues that had nothing to do with could we close candidates or not. And Mohawk immediately went, took this information, went back to his team, started in, sort of in the moment coaching them on, we want to make sure we're digging into assessing properly. Do, we do you understand how to level things? Do you understand how we should think about these types of candidates? Immediately, he was made aware of a problem he didn't even know he had. What's most critical about this whole thing is, I didn't do really anything other than sit down and have a beer and take on Pat's in invitation to say, let, let me help you think through some of these things. I immediately went out to Christina, who had our comp team, and said, hey, I need to take a look at this. She had me work with someone on her team. Pat had given me some guidance. Mohawk was involved. Aaron, who heads up our engineering HR, was involved. Normally, I would have been trying to solve this by myself. My job became 85% easier by simply sharing the hypothesis. So let's revisit this. You grabbed a beer. Yeah. You tested your hypothesis. You had one expectation. The customer had something else. No surprise yep. there. You partnered with others to solve a business problem. It became us together against the problem, us to explore it. Correct. And your job got easier. My job got easier, and be that became more evident that my job is not my job. And you're not solving a symptom, you're solving the problem. Yep. In entering into these things, knowing that I just want to help the company when there's no one to blame, we just want to win and be successful, it really alleviates a lot of that historical tension that is in the system that we work in within TA. 
And Mohawk, again, I didn't really, I didn't have to do much except involve people and share a hypothesis. Mohawk was just blown away. Like, didn't solve anything immediately. Like, this is the best insight I've seen from you guys. And I'm like, this isn't just TA. This is a collection of people that are trying to help you and LinkedIn succeed. A different type of conversation than I've had many years ago, which would have been like, you're on that side of the line, I'm on this side of the line, and it's your fault. I mean, you've been there. I know, you, I know you've been there. Pat, why don't you take it from here? All right. So everyone uses data to some extent to solve problems and or chase a symptom. We all do it. What I want to know is how have you used this data to solve your business problems? So my ask of you guys, pair up, person next to you, spend 60 seconds, 30 seconds each, and describe the problem you solve by using data and when you're done, tweet this, hashtag talent connect, my data solved, X, describe it. So you can share how you have dressed a business problem, had your virtual beer, and develop better relationships. Starting now, pair up, 60 seconds. We good? We're good? Get the mics. All right, there's a lot of passion. Streaming, streaming people. Streaming. We can see you in We see in you interwebs. virtually. You should be grabbing someone too. All right. Let's rein this conversation back, back in, back. Brandon. They got a lot of data solving going on. <laughs> you, that now is I'm a, curious. That, hello. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> They're solving their problems. They're grabbing beers. I see some tea over there and coffee. <laughs> All right. We got to keep things rolling. So That was a you, lot of best practices that being was awesome. shared. That was amazing. So I really do want you to share it. So if you have a moment while we're talking right after this, do your hashtag Talent Connect, share the problem that you solved with data, expand our minds. So thank you for that participation. We also want to talk about speaking up. That is the number one thing I ask all of you to do. About a year ago, I think it was, you and I were in London, right, doing a yep. Talent Connect. I had the privilege of hosting a customer roundtable with heads of TA, probably like 30, 40 people in the room. It was a great moment for me to learn what's happening in EMEA. And the shocking insight that I gained from that session was easily a third of them actually asked me, head of HR, how to secede from the union, how to leave HR. I don't want to work for HR. Yeah, see, jaws dropped. Like, hey, no Maybe clapping. I'm like, that's, oh my God, that would panic me. I don't know what to do without my, my talent partner with me. When he speaks, I listen. His exec search team, his recruiters, have given me casual insight in the hallway. I think they were testing me, Brendan. Probably. Probably. They like to test me, blah, blah, blah. But they tested me. They gave me some insight on a senior candidate. And that insight stopped me from making a wrong hire. They knew something was off. I double clicked, paused on an offer, validated their intuition, and we didn't make an offer. I listened. I also listened when there was a huge push for talent in technology and SREs and mobile engineers. And what competition is doing something different? Why is my acceptance rate dropped? What's going on? And now they speak up. There's someone listening. We are a better company because we are listening. Don't secede from LinkedIn, Brendan. Don't, dude. <laughs> I so need you. So speak up. Don't carry the boulder. Speak up. Want to give him another example? Sure. Uh, and, and, this, and, and so you're sitting there, and think about those things that are like eating at you that you want to go t share with the business or your HR business partner. I've been, in, I mean, I've walked in your shoes. And my experience is nine times out of ten, I don't share it. I might bitch about it to someone on my team, which is complete BS. Because if really my job is to help the company win, I am failing by not speaking up. And it's a, it's a change to make. But if your goal is to help the company win, it's your responsibility to do it and demand excellence from your leader. 
And I think that's, that's fair when you have a, a higher goal. So now we're in, Pat and I are in the flow where if there's something that I'm just like, this seems nuts. I was on vacation a while, you know, a couple weeks back at the end of the summer. I was actually on vacation, just wanted to give her a quick call to talk about something. Like one of those things that normally I, I would have probably gone on and carried around and festered and something that I just philosophically wanted to share about how we're thinking about some, some things we wanted to do as a HR team. We just had the conversation. Or, hey, I think TA really needs to be in that discussion about exec talent review. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Let's talk about it. So it becomes more of the natural flow. But challenge yourself and challenge yourself. Decide. It's a decision point. Right now is a decision point for you as a TA leader. How good do you want to be? Do you want to be a business leader or do you want to be a TA wonk? Do you want to be an HR person who the business people don't want to speak to? Do you want to solve a business problem? You need to decide. And then once you make the decision, then it becomes natural to be like, I must speak and share what I see. So those are a few that. examples. And then it becomes more natural. It just becomes the status of how you work, and it becomes the dynamic between you and your peers and your team and your partners. I mean, if you think of something twice in a room, I ask my team to speak up. If you actually pause and thought about it twice, it means it's in your head. There's a yep. reason. You may not have all your data ready, but you want to have a dialogue, speak up. Everyone will learn from your voice. Perfect. So you have one more little case study to, to share. And I would say, you know, one thing that I realize is necessary. So, you know, I can go have coffees and sh shoot my mouth off uh, and be a victim and not have solutions, but that doesn't really work. So I can't just go opining all day long. I must have my TA house in order. The way we're set up, we have a centralized recruiting team. I'm the leader of that center of excellence uh, with my peers who do their respective things in compensation and ops. So I got to have my house in order. If I'm going to open my mouth, I better have my house in order. So we took on building something that we've shared over the past couple of years here. Internally, we called it Project Catapult. But it was the idea of using data to recruit differently. Any, has anyone seen this two by two, just by a show of hands? Some people have. So There's I'll give the real, real quick lowdown. The idea is I think we as recruiting folks need to understand the talent pools and the markets we recruit in inside, out, up down, back, forward, you need to just be nails on understanding your talent. Why? Because I think, one, recruiting is highly inefficient. So what we've done is used a quality score, quality signal, and affinity signal, if you will, to prioritize who we want to get after. So we go out, work with the engineering leaders. This is an example where we found the 2,000 best systems infrastructure engineers, the folks in the upper right quadrant, the one-to-one -one quadrant, just to simplify things, are the highest quality based on the definition that the engineers want in this type of engineer. And affinity signal is signals you need to know to make better decisions around how you approach candidates. Do they follow your company? Quantitatively, that matters. Do they post content you think is important? You should know that. Do they follow uh, other companies that are proxy for maybe being a good fit? And the most overlooked and most obvious, do they know someone at your company? So in using this, we've found that we've been able to get a huge increase in response rate. It went from 28% to 85% by taking this approach. And then what's more is our throughput in using this ended up being incredibly successful and got a huge lift. We ran this as a pilot, and in systems infrastructure engineering where we piloted this, the recruiter who ran the pilot became the most successful recruiter doing inf systems infrastructure engineering for LinkedIn. Why am I sharing this with you? Because about a year ago, I uh, sat down with the HR team and engineering and said, ah, it seems like, it seems like recruiting is having some challenges hiring enough engineering managers. I was like, whoa, OK. All right. My normal self would have got uh, defensive, probably would have started, started pointing fingers. and Blame and, it on comp. Yeah. Maybe. Just would have started pointing fingers. <laughs> but said, instead, and we said, OK, you know what? Why don't we go look at the plan of record and understand what's going on? Why don't we call the talent analytics team to take a quick look at it? They emailed us a day later and said, it looks like the team is tracking towards the goal of record for the year. I was like, oh, that's good. But it seems like there's some other issues happening. It seems like there is demand for more hiring managers, just not in the plan. Perhaps the spans and layers, if you will, the org shape and strategy around designing the engineering organization needs to shift. We need a different plan. So that went from, hey, we're not hiring enough engineering managers. That was a year ago. Now the relationship I have with the engineering HR head, we're talking about things that are really important for the company to solve. We're not down in the we don't have enough candidates issues. We're seeing the horizon and able to talk to our engineering leaders in a new and different way. So why does that total addressable market recruiting stuff matter? One, go to Eddie Vivas's keynote tomorrow morning because there's some really interesting stuff that's tied into product related to that stuff that was just up there. 
And second, I can't open my mouth and go opining if my house isn't in order. So I was able to explain to our head of engineering HR, look, if we can get the right plan, hold my feet directly to the fire. That's my core role as I'm a center of excellence for recruiting. I got to help good people get hired. But we need to work together to have some clarity so we can all succeed. So it's a combination of things. You do have to have your act together in terms of what you do functionally. But again, in the context, I'm trying to help the company win. So one quick plug is you'll see a bunch of people running around with these. These are all folks that work in Pat's GTO organization. We've got some HR folks and some uh, TA folks. If you want to have any questions answered about LinkedIn products or questions about this stuff, you can find one of us. And all Pat, right. why don't you take us home? Take us home. So I started off saying it's not about TA, it's not about HR, and it's not, right? Your job's not your job. And, you know, so Brendan and I worked on it. I read his body language, his blah, blah, blah in his head, and I'm like, dude, let's call it out. Let's figure this out. Let's have the conversations. And we learned. And from that point on, we developed a really close relationship. We're now BFFs. <laughs> I love BB. <laughs> <laughs> so the conversations we have now are so different. It's like, what do you think? It's like throwing spaghetti against the wall, it's more natural. And when he goes to bat with the client and says, here, this is what I think, what do you think? It's engaging, it's inquiring, it's seeking to understand and bringing data. And from data comes products like the TAM. It helps serve you better. So our healthy relationship turns into opportunity. So now we want to get you on that path to opportunity. Think of the one person on stream. We want you to think about this as well. Think about the one person in your role, in your business environment, that you can improve that relationship, that you want to speak up and have that beer. Can you please pause for 15 seconds and text them an email? and say, I want to grab a beer, I want to have lunch, let's chat, and start making that relationship flourish. And I want the stream to do it too. And here's the call to action, Brendan. I'm not sure they're really going to do it. So I brought my Give phone. Me my phone. I'm going to do it, you do it. Yeah, let's do it. And when you're done reaching out to that one person that you want to build that relationship for, please stand up. Make your statement that you're working to improve your relationships. And just for clarity, we want everyone standing. Well, of course. So like, let's we're going do for the this. gold. So hit your phones, whether you got to text them, email them. So we got thousands of you improving in relationships around the world. So let's go. Find that one person, text them, invite them to your virtual Stand up beer, once you've done it. Then stand up when you're done. So, Brenda, can you click me forward one, please? So this is the deal, wrapping it up. Recruiters, coordinators, sourcers, you are the canary in the coal mine. I need you. The company needs you to win. You create a talent experience. It's a life cycle experience from hire to retire. You are rock stars. Speak up. You are rock stars. Woo! Yeah, give me some. You have magic. I see you perform it. I love what you do. And your job is not your job. We are here to win. We're here to win for LinkedIn, for Nordstrom's, for Starbucks, for Citra, everybody. We want you to win what you need to accomplish for your company, and we're here to enable you. So, Pat, I know, I know we're short on time, but like a 10-second thing. Give us a little, little, little opener. So you're a recruiter. I'm that person. You're like, I so want to give this person peace of my mind. Give me just like the language you would use if you want to get after this sort of idea of solving business problems and building this relationship. What would you say to me? All right, awesome. So I'm going to have a beer with Wade. We just texted. OK. And, and you're Wade. I'm Wade. All right, you're Wade. So Wade, I think we have an amazing opportunity for talent right now. And I know that you're concerned about the hiring plan. But I think if we did a better diversity outreach in play and focus on inclusion, together we can not only achieve your goals, but like change the culture and help influence the world. So can we just like hang out for a bit and talk about what you see as our opportunity and how I can help fulfill that dream? Absolutely. <laughs> right let's on, let's go talk. That's how I'd start it, Wade. I got you. <laughs> so in wrapping us up, 
As simple as that sounds, I can admit to there have been hundreds of opportunities that I've squandered in my career to have that exact conversation. And it said it manifested in some tension and the BS that exists. And I'm just missing the forest through the trees. They're like, we're just here to help our companies win. And if you approach it with that, how do you resist that? If someone comes to you and says it like that, what am I going to say? Don't. No. So grab a beer, grab a coffee, go for a walk, speak up, decide to speak up. Second, keep the focus on business problems. Our business leaders, our clients, our internal customers, they don't want to hear a bunch of recruiting stuff. They want you to help solve their business problems. And you both have hypotheses, and you both could be wrong, right? Brendan thought it was comp, the, the hiring managers thought it was recruiters, they were both wrong. So if you open up to the possibility that you are looking at a symptom and not the problem, you will get to solution much faster. So test both hypotheses, just don't prove that you're right. I think that, that just That's about it. does it. That about does it. So one more little plug before we jump. Tomorrow, there's some really cool data that LinkedIn is going to be making available to everyone. Our global uh, recruiting trends for 2016 uh, report's going to be out. There's also going to be a session about it, so you can pick it up in the Inge lounge, in lounge, some really great information for you. So hopefully you find some value there. Thank you for your time. Most of all, thank you for doing what you do. Thank and you. And thank you for participating in all of this insanity that was this discussion today. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys the rest of the week. Enjoy. Enjoy.